name's Rob. I am a travel photographer and I go by the name Asher on Instagram. I've always liked traveling and I kind of felt like I needed to share that with people as much as a lot of people didn't want to see it. Um, it didn't feel right to be in an amazing location with a sunset without at least the camera in hand. Um, and so over time started to get into it with iPhone photography, drone photography and then eventually bought a Sony and fell in love with it. It was one of those that was always in the background, I think. Like, I've not been a photographer for too long, but it was something where I had more and more interest in it. I was finding in my spare time, I was watching lots of videos on how to improve my photography. And as time went on, jobs started to come in. It started to kind of take over from the other things that I was doing. Um, but there, there was no necessarily defining moment where I changed. I think it's one of those things you have to treat it like a progression. It's a hard job to just jump into, so you need to kind of learn and, and develop and not put too much emphasis on it at the beginning. Tons and tons. So I have obviously my niche, which is travel photography, environmental portraiture, landscape photography, um, and, and as much lifestyle as I can incorporate. But I've taken inspiration from photographers in all different niches. Uh, my number one is obviously Short Stash, Garrett King, um, George Hammond is a huge travel photographer, James Charles Hill, one of the best landscape photographers I know, and then some of the smaller people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, people I communicate with, people like Ricardo Braz, uh, one of my friends Yuri from, from Barcelona, these people might only have four or five thousand followers on Instagram, but they're still really talented and I would learn more from them than I would do from much, much of the bigger photographers. So, well, my first mirrorless was, was a Sony a7 III. My first ever camera was an old DSLR Sony, which I can't even remember the name of. <laughs> it wasn't very good. Um, but to be honest, the, the thing that progressed from just the standard iPhone photography into more professional photography was a drone. So I bought the DJ Mavic Air when that came out a few years back. And that just completely changed my perspective on photography. Obviously gave you the top-down view. Um, and it just, I don't know, made me appreciate it a bit more. And then from then on, just had to migrate over to Sony cameras and have a look back, I think it's my favorite. Currently have the Sony A7R3 and the Sony A7III products. But what I would say to someone starting out is a prime lens is great. It allows you to learn photography better, get your composition better. But if you're gonna go for one lens, go for uh, a zoom lens. So you can get like a, the Sony G Master, I think it's like 16 to 24 or something like that, just to give you a bit more um, leeway, because that I have to keep changing on and off all the time. I'm guilty of that. I think there are conflicting views on it. A lot of people say, work your way out, don't invest in the most expensive gear and expect to be a good photographer. And, and while I do agree with that, I think as long as you understand the basics and you learn and you're continually on YouTube and speaking to other people to try and develop, there's no reason why you can't get, not the most expensive, but an expensive product, a professional product that you will learn with and get better with. And I think you're gonna get better images that way than if you were to choose a lower camera that you could use for a year for upgrading and continue to upgrade. I feel like if you can afford it, go for the better camera and just learn on the job. If I was starting out now, I would go for the Sony mirrorless A7 III or the Fuji X-T3 mirrorless. Uh, Two main ones, composition and lighting, as everybody will probably agree. Um, you can save composition in, in post, but lighting is very difficult. That's why people shoot at sunrise and sunset, because the light is softer, it's easier to work with, it's easier to edit. But if you don't have that luxury and you're just abroad with your camera, if you're shooting in harsh light, always try and underexpose as much as you can and bring up those shadows when you're editing. You can basically exposed to the highlights, make sure your sky is looking how it normally would look in real life. And if your shadows are dark, it's fine, you bring them back up. So I have my base set. Um, I have three or four different base sets, depending on the color. So I have, uh, if it's blue, I'll have a certain, certain preset that will sort of darken those blues, create more of a steel look. If it's green, I'll have a, a base set that like desaturates those greens, make them a bit more sort of autumnal, a bit more orange, and then I'll have other base sets for brighter, harsher light situations. That should only be treated as a base though. You should you should apply that preset and then work from there. 
Um, I don't think any preset should be a one-click wonder. It doesn't really work. Um, so yeah, I, I, will, I will always apply my base set and then I'll adjust certain things. And I think over time you start to realize what you need to change and what you don't need to change. Well, I'm an advocate for speed. So I know a lot of people spend hours and hours on each photo, but when you're a photographer, that's not efficient. You need to be able to get through batches quickly. So I could spend anywhere between two minutes to an hour on a photo. I'm usually trying to aim to the lower, lower side of that because I know what I'm doing. I know I apply that base set. If that base set works, I can adjust the things I need to adjust. Maybe color out some things I don't want. Wash out, sorry, some things that I don't want and then move on to the next one. And you can batch edit that way and you can sync up your settings and make everything match and then flick through and make sure that everything looks good and it doesn't like, because obviously some settings won't work on some images depending on the lighting um, but in general two to five minutes I can spend on an image if there are things I will get rid of I'll jump into Photoshop and I'll I'll remove those those manually I think travel photographer it's something I'd like to be, but at the moment, seeing as I'm based in London and I spend at least six months of a year in London, I can't quite yet class myself as a travel photographer. Um, aspiring travel photographer, maybe, but I think it's a style that I like and it's what I try to do. Um, but until I'm able to fly around the world, all year around, doing this as my job non-stop, I I'll never class myself as a travel photographer. Uh, last minute, it's always last minute. Um, I have some information on my Instagram where I explain the process I go through, uh, but usually I rely on uh, flight deals. So I'll have a list of places I want to go, and then I'll set a Google flight alert for those places. As soon as that price drops, if I want to go there, if I still want to go there, and it works with the dates, I'll get that trip booked. And then sometimes this is like a week. It's often like a week before I fly, so it's very last minute. But I've got the time, I'll do it, and then I will look at accommodation, and then I'll start to route plan. And a lot of that comes through Google Maps and Google Earth, Google Earth especially, because you can sort of see the, the undulations in the landscape, you can see certain areas where you think it might be quieter, and you can start to plan the shots you want to take, and that's when creating a shot list comes in. So um, I will go through Pinterest, I'll go through Instagram, I'll go through Google, as much as I can find to try and create a mood board of the images that I like and the images that I want to create or to create something similar um, and then I'll get out there that'll be on my phone and I'll get out there and I'll be uh, using that as, as sort of a viable as to what I'm trying to do. I have a habit of turning up somewhere seeing something I like and taking a picture which is technically the wrong thing to do and those are usually the images I never use they're just sitting there on my SD card um, but I'm a big advocate for making a shot as opposed to taking a shot so if it's just an amazing landscape, is there something in that landscape you can draw someone's attention to? It might be if you had a long, long road running through Iceland. While that looks amazing, the car in the middle of that image on that road draws your eye right into the centre of the image, gives it a bit more substance to look at. The same with an uh, example of, I, I took recently with some boots in, for you guys in, in Italy. Having those boots and that boat in the foreground led your eyes and point it with the edge of the boat to the middle of the image and it just allows you to take in all of the image as opposed to just one area or as opposed to just seeing something and not really knowing where to look. Um, so I, I, that kind of image I've made, I've thought about it in my head, uh, I've planned it out, I've contorted in weird ways to try and get the camera to, to work for that angle. Um, but that's something that you've always got to do if you want something good. I think some of the ones I've shot with you guys I really liked. I think it just works with that setting. Um, but there, there are images, I think, my hero images, my favorite images are ones I've taken just without really thinking. Just, I've, I've had images in mind, but sometimes the light hasn't worked out and I'll, I'll just not take the image. And later on, maybe the next day, the sun's perfect, the beach is perfect, the color of the, the bushes, the green is perfect, and I'll just take an image. And I think there's a couple on my Instagram where I think I was, in, I was in Holbosch in Mexico where it's just such a rustic nice feel to the image and that's something that I would never sell to anybody it's not it's not good enough to sell to anybody it wasn't shot on a good camera um, it wasn't client work but it's something that I 
enjoy taking and it kind of resonates with me and it's, it's got these three bicycles cycling across the beach so it's like a, a dirt track and then these three bicycles cycling across the beach and it just everything worked out for me I didn't I didn't know they were coming but it just it worked out created a nice um, depth of the image and that's something that hopefully when I go back to Mexico I'll be able to fake I'll be able to recreate but with a better camera I actually thought about doing this in Italy, but chickened out. So I'm quite, I'm getting quite into underwater photography, and I just think it opens up a whole new world, just a completely different perspective. And with an underwater housing, you can have a dome port, uh, which allows you to shoot above and below. So you could capture someone's feet in the water, swimming, and, and the rest of the body above it. And that's something I'm trying to do more of now. Um, obviously, location permitting, struggle to do that in an alpine lake. Um, and I won't be able to do that in Iceland, but hopefully in Brazil, it's something I can try and do, and hopefully Costa Rica, Mexico, these kind of places would be perfect for that. Um, but there is a shot I have in mind, which I wanted to take in Italy, which was of someone swimming in the lake, not in a wetsuit, just in, a, in, in a, either, either in a girl, either in a dress, or in just a bikini, and the lower half of her body was in the water, and I'd really darken it down, desaturate the blues, make it almost black and white, and then the top half of her body would be out of the water and then behind her would be the snowy mountains. So that's what I wanted, but persuading me to get into the water, persuading the model to get into the water, it's just a whole different game. Um, but hopefully in the next year or so I'll have that image. It's, it's difficult, so expect it to take a while. Um, collaborations are huge, so collaborations that don't involve money but involve product exchange for photos are huge for you to get experience, to develop your portfolio, to just kind of add something to your account. Um, but in terms of actually getting the income, that's something where you're commissioned from, from brands. So usually you just have to keep shooting, get your work out there, and they will reach out to you. And I think there are ways you can do it to discount some of the things you're doing. So if you were, wanted to be a travel photographer, if you, on your next few trips, took some photos of the hotels, and then added that to a portfolio, um, you could then, when you next go on holiday, you could reach out to a couple of hotels and ask them if they'd be willing to exchange free stay for photos and you could provide them a portfolio. Similar photos you've taken, you don't have to say who those brands are, you just show them examples of your work um, and that can obviously drastically reduce your, uh, your cost. Wake up early. Wake up early. Sunrise and sunset are always going to be the best time to shoot. Um, and I, it all comes down to planning. Just make sure you've prepped the night before, have an idea of the image you want to take. Doesn't matter if it's been taken before, you can always add your own spin on it. Um, and just get up early, get there before everyone else does, get that good light, and just take that image you want. I think photography, you can get lost in, in commercializing it, you can get lost in stressing about not having the photos you want, but if you wake up early and you get to those destinations, you're going to enjoy it so much that you kind of forget about all the things that go on behind the camera and you just take a nice shot. So that's something that I would always advocate. That's what I try to do more of, but as you grow it, it gets harder and harder. It's just, it's added a whole new avenue for me. Not, not just a monetary avenue, but just communication. Like I've, I've met so many new people through photography. It's the one thing we have in common and yet we've become really close because of it. Um, it allows you to travel if that's something you want to do. It allows you to get out, you don't have to sit behind a desk, you can be out on the streets, you can be flying on a plane to go to a beach, you can just live a bit more freely. Um, and it's something that yeah, I will always want to do. Um, and I, I mean, it's, it's something that you, you probably never be fully satisfied with what you're producing and like how good you are, but the, the recognition you get from other people is always so gratifying and it's something that I haven't had that much in previous jobs. It's just not something you get, whereas in photography people really appreciate what you're creating.